I made this wall mounted bottle opener with a magnetic cap catcher a while ago for my house. And then I made another one for my brother-in-law. But unfortunately the package was lost in transit on its way to Colorado. So today I'm gonna make another one for him and this time I'm gonna show you how I did it. All right, so there could be a few different reasons as to why you're watching this video right now, but I'm only going to call out two of them. The first being you enjoy woodworking videos and you're here to watch me make a cool project. And if that's the case, I appreciate your support and I hope I don't disappoint. And the second reason is that you're planning on making one of these bottle openers and you're here to learn how to do it. And if it's the latter, I'll do my best to explain each step along the way. And I also encourage you to use your imagination a little bit for this project, because if you think about it, it's just a piece of wood with a bottle opener on it and a magnet to catch the cap. So you can make it as simple or as elegant as you'd like. So far, you've seen me run the board through the planer with the flat side facing down, just to remove a little bit of the thickness and to get the opposite face flat as well. And then I took it over to the joiner to square up one of the edges, which I referenced against the fence at my table saw and then ripped the board down to its final width. And then lastly, I used my crosscut sled to bring the board down to its final length. And make sure you don't throw away any off cuts of walnut because you'll never know if you might need it in the future. So in the last one I made, I used my X-Carve CNC to carve out a design, which I came back later and filled in with some orange epoxy. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this one too. So I opened up easel, I adjusted the material type and dimensions, I added in my image, I changed the bit and the cut settings, and then I got ready for the carve. So I've got the piece all carved out and it's looking pretty good, but it's missing something. And I think what I'm gonna do is add some maple all the way around. It's kind of like a little frame with some mitered corners. And uh, that'll help just give it a little bit more width to it. And then also when I go to pour the epoxy, as you can see, it's just not gonna go up right up to the edge. And uh, I'm gonna end up chamfering the edges as well. And it's not gonna cut into the design. So I've got this strip of maple, two of them actually, that I'm gonna cut out. And it's about three quarters of an inch square. And I typically don't like to cut material this thin on the table saw. So I'm just gonna leave it as is. I'm gonna make the surrounding and then I'll take it to the table saw later on and then trim it down to the uh, desired dimensions. Now there are a few different ways that you could cut these miters, but I ended up using the miter gauge with a piece of plywood that I attached to it. I cut 45 degrees at one end of the maple strip and then lined it up against the walnut piece, made a mark with a pencil, and then I headed back to the table saw to sneak up on the fit. To attach the maple frame, I used some wood glue and held all the pieces together with some blue painter's tape. Now I'm sure the tape would have been enough to keep pressure on the pieces while the glue dried, but I decided to throw some clamps on it too, just to be safe. And while the glue was doing its thing, I got things ready for the epoxy pour. A couple pumps of epoxy resin and hardener in a cup, an accidental heaping of orange pigment and a healthy two minute stir, and then it was time for the pour. And then finally, a failed attempt to mimic a first-person shooter game while I used my heat gun to pop the bubbles. And since I had a little time to kill while the epoxy cured, I decided to touch up the bottle opener itself. I started out by using a wire brush on my Dremel to clean it up a bit and then gave it a fresh new coat of paint. And with the glue all dry and the epoxy all cured, it was time to trim that frame over at the table saw. Next, I used a coarse 80 grit disc on my random orbital sander to remove the excess epoxy, and then I added a slight chamfer to the edges with my block plane. 
And after that, it was time to work on what makes this magnetic bottle opener magnetic. I marked out the placement of where I wanted the magnets to go on the back of the piece and then used an inch and a quarter Forstner bit at my drill press. I set the depth stop so it would drill as deep as it could without popping through the other side. All right, so you can definitely use one magnet, but two is better. So I'm gonna go with two. And I have a hole in here in the back, which is an inch and a quarter in diameter that matches the size of these. And you could just hot glue this in and it would be fine, but I wanna take it a step further and plug it up with some walnut. So I'm gonna take that scrap piece that I had from earlier and go to the CNC and then just cut a inch and a quarter hole so then I can plug this up. To hold the plug in place, I mixed up some five minute epoxy with some of that orange pigment from before. I added way too much epoxy because as you can see, a ton of it squeezed out after I pushed the plug into place, but it wasn't a big issue though. I just removed some of it now and then sanded it down later. Whoops. And then when it was all dry, I used a flush trim saw on the plug. I sanded everything down and then it was time to add the finish. I think I went a little overboard on the finish, but I ended up doing two to three coats of shellac and then off camera I did two coats of a wipe on polyurethane and then finished things off with a coat of wax. So this wouldn't be a casual builds video if I didn't tell you about a mistake that I made. And that mistake is when I took this little keyhole bit that I was gonna use on my X-carve to cut some keyholes in the back of the piece. And then that ultimately would make it easy for someone to hang this bottle opener up on a wall. But I didn't secure the piece in tightly enough because when it started to carve, the piece went all over the place and then it just you know ruined everything. So I decided to do another carve and that worked. But when I flipped the piece over, I realized that that slot is in the same exact position where I need to screw in the bottle opener from the other side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill in those keyhole slots with some epoxy. I'm gonna just screw the bottle opener from the front and then I'll figure out a different way to attach it to the wall. After the epoxy dried, I sanded down the excess and then off camera, I sprayed a few coats of shellac on it. And then I installed the bottle opener on the front, which by the way, was poorly made. You'll see in a second. And there's a few ways that you can mount this to the wall. You can drive some screws through the piece into some studs. You can attach a magnet on the back and hang it up on a fridge, or you can do what I did for the one in my house and just use some sticky Velcro tape, which is actually what I'm gonna use right now to test this thing out. And obviously I had to test it out with my brother-in-law's favorite beer, straight from Golden, Colorado and as cold as the Rocky Mountains, Coors, the banquet beer.